So I need to get some compo repairs on this frame. I've made some silicon moulds. I'll leave a link in the description to the video um, on how to make these moulds. So today we are getting the compo, which is traditionally what, what this is. It's probably the, the same recipe. Now I think I'm the only person who makes and sells this in the UK. You can buy the compo from Goldleaf Supplies or Rights of Lynn. So if you want to try it out, uh, just contact them and they'll sell it to you. It's really simple to use. I heat mine in a microwave. Uh, you can use a bain-marie, um, steam it, but it, for me it takes a long time and I don't want all that water in, in my atmosphere with all these antiques that I've got around. What you always have to do when you're not using this is keep it in the fridge. I have it in this bag, I wrap the bag up like that and then I put another bag over it and I keep that in the fridge. Now it will last, I don't know, two, three weeks and it can go a bit mouldy. Um, and really if it's mouldy, it is surface mould, you can wash it off but I wouldn't want to use it if it was mouldy. Um, but all you do is you get a little pot with some whiting in the bottom because if you put this straight in the microwave it'll stick. This is mostly made of glue so once it's warm it is very sticky. So little pot, some whiting. I'm going to put it in the microwave for about 20 seconds, try it, usually 10 to 15 seconds more so you know no more than sort of 40 seconds to heat this up. That's had about 20 seconds. You can see it's starting to go, but one side is still solid. So that's solid and that's soft. So it just, just needs a bit more. There you go, that's perfect. Now it's a bit soft. Now I always make my compo a little bit soft. You can always add some whiting in. That's all you need to do is just add some and knead the whiting in. Now that will bulk it out and that will make it a bit stiffer. You just need to make sure you really knead it all in. Now I'd rather make it on the slightly soft side than make it too hard because you can always make it harder but you can't make it softer. So. If, if you think it feels too soft, just just put a bit more whiting in with it. That's all it needs. There you go, it's, it's already stiffening up a bit. Now that makes it easier to work when you're coming to put that in your mould. You want it really smooth. You don't want any of these creases in it because if you put that crease, that will come out of your mould and that's what you'll see. So what you want is a nice smooth side so that when you're putting it in your mould you don't get any creases. You can almost polish this and get a shine on it, it's lovely stuff. Alright, so this is really soft, um, but it's got like a skin on it. If you break it, you can see inside that it's a um, slightly different colour and this is sort of the skin, which it's got contact with the air so it's starting to dry. So what I do, pinch a piece off and then you fold that skin back in on itself. The whiting that's in here, if you coat your hands with it, the warm compo then won't stick to your hands. So what you're looking for is really smooth. So pick your piece, make a sort of a sausage. And your fingers are creating the pressure to push it in because you don't want any air gaps in there. Keep it nice and smooth on the back. The better you can make this process, the less trimming you have to do. But often when people first use compo, they really overfill the moulds. Um, and then you've got to trim it all off um, and you can't really use the, the trimmings again. So it's quite a waste. So there you go, nice and smooth. You don't want to overheat the compo, you want it so that it's pleasant to hold. If, if it's too hot, well apart from being not great to hold, um, you're basically overcooking it. 
this has got um, animal glue in there, so you can't overheat animal glue or it, um, it ruins it. It doesn't act as a glue anymore once it's um, gone past a certain temperature. Right, so get a bigger bit for this. Get it nice and smooth. It does feel really nice. It's it's just like like bread dough. It's lovely to to use. The smell isn't so great, but nothing with the uh, animal glue is pleasant, is it? Again, I'm trying to keep this nice and thin. Right, that's all ready, cool enough to peel out. But I am going to leave it a little bit longer before I cut it. In about 10 minutes I'm going to come back to those and start the first trimming process. Right, so I've got a few bits of compo pressed out now. So I'm just coming along with my scalpel. I, I use one of these nice rounded end scalpels. I find that really suits me. Um, so I'm just trimming off the excess at the back here. So I'm cutting that straight down. But when I come to this bottom edge, what I'm going to do is hold it up and sort of cut on the sort of a slant on a like chamfer. And if you remember watching the paint stripping video of this mirror that we're restoring, You'll remember me saying about attention to detail. The same with this. This sort of attention to detail, really crisp cutting out, is going to make a good restoration. You've just got to put a lot of time into restoration to make it look good. But the effort really is worthwhile. So as you can see, the compost still soft. It's really quite easy to push the scalpel blade through this. There is hardly any pressure there. I'm going to leave these bits to harden off over a few days um, and trying to cut it when it's hard. That's when you can really cut yourself because it's, um, it's really difficult. So there you go. That's one trimmed. I'm probably going to need about eight of these, so I best press some more out, but that's all you do. These, all right, these balls are tricky. They tend to break up a lot. So I don't know if you can tell, but that there where the compost coming up is the back edge. That's where it sits next to a flat wall on the mirror so I'm going to cut straight down on that back edge and then again I'm going to cut underneath on an angle and sometimes these balls do fall apart 
well, they're fairly close together, so they um, they might not. Sometimes the French ones that have more of a in between there, there's meant to be like um, a string. It's meant to look like a string of pearls, and the French ones tend to exaggerate that gap a bit. The English ones are a bit closer together. And yes, I know a lot of you were thinking, have I cut myself? Many times. I've got a, a lovely scar down that finger where I managed to put the scalpel through it. But I don't cut myself as often as I used to. And that's just learning the pressure that I can put on this compo. Uh, what I'm going to do is, I'm still sanding and filling this bottom edge, which is where this decoration is going. So I'm trimming this while it's soft. I'm going to work out how many I need um, by just sort of lining it up and, and counting one, two, three, etc. So press them all out. I always do an extra one because always something happens. And I'm going to let that dry for a few days um, because it's much easier to attach once it's dry. Right, so we've got these little fiddly bits. You'll find on decoration like this, the same piece keeps falling off. So this shell and this sort of fan shape has fallen off several times. So I've just created some little pieces just to um, get them rather than press the whole thing out. These are great for when you're trying to find these little lines, like up there, I've got little bits, but when you've just got these bits, you just need to press, press that one bit out really. So I'm just going to trim it larger than I need. And that's because unfortunately, compo shrinks. Um, and that's why you get these cracks, is because over time, the water content in here, and you have to have water content because of the animal glue, um, the water just sort of evaporates over time and um, cracks. But it also means that in the first sort of four or five days, it does quite a bit of shrinking. So you do have to um, try and allow for that a little bit. Right, so I'm not actually going to cut this off um, until it's done its little bit of shrinking. So I'm going to leave that there for a few days. Um, as I say, after about four days, it's probably the majority of its shrinking has happened. So these little bits of compo I cut out are now quite solid. So they have shrunk a little bit, so I can now trim it to shape. But what I'm going to do first is just make sure the back is nice and flat. So I've got some 80 grit sandpaper. And I'm just rubbing the back. And you'll see it's much, much harder now. I can, I can score it. There we get. Right, that feels about level. That's not quite perfect, but I'll live with that. So that's ready. Now what I'm doing is I'm coming in with this fish glue. Now usually animal glue needs to be warmed up, but as you can see, this is liquid at room temperature so that's amazing stuff you don't have to heat it up it's great so just a tiny bit of fish glue there bit of a wiggle 
get rid of that little bit of excess. Make sure it's all down. There you go. Right, all the compo is now dry. It's had a few days. So what I'm going to do is fit this decoration onto this bottom bar here because it's all missing. Let's take this over to the pan of boiling water. The water's really boiling. This ceramic tile is really hot. I'm just spraying some water on there. So I get my dry piece of compo, sit it on there, and I'm just rubbing it because I don't want to leave this on here too long. It will actually melt it. And what you're feeling for is that, that's that drag there. You peel that off. And then you can stick that down. So because this has a lot of animal glue in, what I'm actually doing when I wet and heat the back is activating that glue. So that's really stuck on there now already. Within uh, about a day you'd need a chisel to take that off. Dry fit first, make sure that join is okay. So again, more water. The more time you've left this to dry, the longer this bit will take, but that's about three days and it's only taken a few seconds. So as you can see, it's just wetted the back. That's it, no glue needed. Right, so I've stuck all the decoration on now. Um, that was two methods, um, cutting them out and gluing them on. Cutting them out and using the hot plate to activate the glue. I usually use the activating the glue on the hot plate method for the long runs, like the, the balls and things. Um, I also use that on these side scrolls that I'm going to be attaching. I uh, cut out some plywood back and I heated the back to, to stick it down. Um, these fiddly tiny little bits, just easier to do with glue. Really when I was filling in just one of the balls, probably would have been easier with glue. It would certainly wouldn't have burnt my fingers. Uh, but anything of any size, it's easier just to heat the back, activate that glue and stick it down. It creates a really good bond. I mean, the compo is just full of glue, so why not use the glue that's there? Um, so I hope that's helped. Um, I'll leave a link in the description to the two places that you can buy my compo from and have a go, have a play. Um, it does smell a little bit, but it's really nice to use. Have fun. <laughs>